Happy Valentine's Day. What? You got me all this garbage and no ring. Yes. You you know what? I'm, like, I'm getting what tired is of you. this? You want me to wear this? No! You just can't get nothing don't, right. Don't don't eat Who none of my food no more. Red roses for Valentine's Day. Who gets red rose? Bro, everybody gets red so roses. What do you do I look like a basic bitch? Quite possibly. We're done. We're done. I swear. Probably You're so done. ungrateful. You're so ungrateful. I'm taking Probably all this stuff done. back. Just do better. Just do no, better. No, no, I'm taking all this stuff back. I need to be treated like a queen. I go get this to another female. And there's like no money in there. There's no money in anything. You didn't give me any money. Wow. The men in Western countries are dissatisfied with the behavior of Western modern women, and they're looking to South America and Asia for more feminine traditional women. Mm-hmm. That's right. One of the reasons for men's dissatisfaction with Western modern women is due to fatherless daughter syndrome. True. Colloquially known as daddy issues, this is an emotional disorder that stems from concerns with trust and lack of self-esteem that leads to a cycle of repeated dysfunctional decisions in relationships with men. Facts. Fatherless daughters are often experiencing fear of rejection and abandonment. Because of this, they tend to avoid emotional attachment. They'll often sabotage or quit healthy relationships because they fear heartbreak. Yes. For future generations, fatherless daughter syndrome is going to be even more of an issue because single motherhood today is glamorized, celebrated, and on the rise. Slapping on cuffs, racking up body counts. But I love my kids so much I gave them all their own daddy. <laughs> you got a daddy. You got a daddy. You got a daddy. What a floozy. A sole woman is unable to bring out the best outcomes for the child. Kabam! Single mothers are generally poorer. Mm -hmm. They are likely to have greater support needs compared to two-parent couples, placing a greater burden on society in general. That is factually true. Facts! Children that are raised in a home with a married mother and father consistently do better in every measure of well-being than their peers who come from divorced or step-parent, single-parent, and cohabiting homes. He ain't lying. Children from fatherless homes are more likely to be poor and to live in crowded housing, as this video from a single mother shows. Imagine having six kids in one bedroom. What? Yes, guys, this is me. I have six children that are all 12 and under in one bedroom. I have two sets of bunk beds in there and it's a nightmare. <laughs> children are particularly vulnerable to this type of poor housing quality because they use the space in the home to do homework, interact with family members, develop an identity, practice their life skills and sleep. <gasps> The degree to which children grow up in crowded housing is a neglected but important aspect of social inequality. These conditions remind me of a recent trend on TikTok called depression rooms. Come and clean my depression room with me. I've had a lot of people comment on my room and how messy it is. I'm pretty sure it comes from the aunties who are like, are you proud of this? You're disgusting. Cleaning my disgusting depression room. That's nasty. Poor living conditions can serve as a mechanism of social stratification, affecting children's well-being and resulting in the intergenerational transmission of social inequality. Oh my God. Children from fatherless homes are also more likely to become involved in substance and alcohol misuse, drop out of school, and suffer from health and emotional problems. Facts. Boys are more likely to become involved in crime, and girls are more likely to become pregnant as teens. <sighs> Single women should be banned from accessing IVF for free because, another quote for you, they exert less control on their children. <laughs> Before dealing with single mothers exerting less control on their children, I want to explain what IVF is because this is something people were asking about in a previous video. Making a baby isn't always easy. Fortunately, there are many ways to parenthood, including in vitro fertilization or IVF. This treatment process brings the miracle of conception into a laboratory, 
During the multi-step procedure, mature eggs are retrieved from ovaries and fertilized with sperm in a Petri dish. It takes a few days for the fertilized eggs to develop into embryos. Within a week, an embryo can be transferred into a uterus in hopes of starting a successful pregnancy. How many eggs come out at once? Like a dozen? Given that a single IVF cycle can range from $15,000 to $30,000, why should the taxpayer fund this so that single women can access it for free? Well, maybe we shouldn't. Especially if the single woman doesn't have a health issue that's stopping her from having children naturally. That escalated quickly. And if the lady in question can't afford IVF herself, then surely she can't afford to raise a child, given that as of 2023, the average cost of doing so is around $16,000 per year. They exert less control on their children. <laughs> Single mothers exerting less control on their children is generally true. One reason for this is that father absence reduces the amount of time families have to invest in children. No way! However, it's not just the amount of time available for children that matters. Social control theory suggests that the absence of a father in the household has adverse consequences for children because the number of adults available to supervise them falls. And even when there are other adults in the household, they're likely to have a more distant relationship to the child and therefore exert less control. Sounds reasonable. Well, there's a brilliant article in The Guardian that's worth reading as well. And a social psychologist, Sophie Zarde, says there is absolutely no difference between children who've been brought up by one parent or two parents. Right. Aside from the extensive research that says otherwise, we intuitively know this to be false. <laughs> After all, what's the likelihood of two distinctly different variables producing identical results? Exactly. It's impossible. Regarding the article she references, 51 solo mother families were compared with 52 two-parent families, all with a four- to nine-year-old child, conceived by donor insemination. Are you serious? This study has some obvious issues worth mentioning. The study only deals with planned children and excludes unwanted children entirely. Say what now? The study only relates to young children, between four and nine years old. Bingo! The differences between individuals outside this age range has been ignored completely. That's reassuring. There's also no mention of how the participants were selected for the study. Were they handpicked or were they sampled randomly so as to omit selection bias? And this is all before the small sample sizes of just over 50 participating families from each group is mentioned. Pathetic. Using a flawed study like this to try and prove that there's absolutely no difference between children who've been brought up by one parent or two parents suggests an extreme confirmation bias. Single motherhood by choice is going to be an option that more and more black women consider and even exercise. I'm not interested in a man unless he drives a BMW. So anybody that's in their feelings about that can go ahead and start to process right now. See, that's the problem. I can't find a man that can satisfy me. Now some guys go an hour, hour and a half, that's it. A man's got to put in overtime for me to get off. Now I am extremely fortunate that I was able to secure two vials of black sperm from California Cryobank. What? This is the type of thinking that has contributed to America having the highest share of single parenting in the world. The phrase, most American children suffer too much mother and too little father, has never been more true. It's really messed up. In 2023, almost a quarter of U.S. children live in a household with a single parent and no other adults present other than adult children. Wow. This is the upshot of when a woman in her youth believes two common effinist untruths, which are that a career is more meaningful than marriage and children, and that women don't need men. <laughs> it's what leads to phrases like, a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle, I don't have to fiddle with a man to have that child, and more recently, self-partnering. I made a realization. Have you ever noticed that the girls with the F all men attitude the girls that are constantly like, there's no good men left in this world. Nyeh. They are usually the ones who can't find sweethearts to be with. I like this one. And for the women who claim to not need a man because they can't find their sweethearts, it's worth remembering that a healthy and balanced society cannot be built with broken people. Hell no! The nuclear family is the very basic building block of society, and creating strong and intelligent families 
is the answer to a lot of social problems. A family unit working together towards one common aim achieves more than women living on their own. I don't care who gets mad. There are certain things that are a man's job. I just defrosted my car. It's freezing outside. And let me tell y'all something. Defrosting a car is a man's job. I want that to be the last time I ever do that. Defrosting a car is a man's job. Just like taking out the trash. I will not be seen taking out the trash. <laughs> I do it, obviously, because I'm a single mother. Poor, poor thing. But that is such a man's job. Defrosting the car, a man's job. Would y'all like a list? Um, actually, no. But if I have a husband, I'm never defrosting my car. That is a man's job. That's interesting. Unfortunately, a post-wall single mother's prospects for marrying well or at all are greatly diminished. <laughs> single mothers are significantly less likely to marry and more likely to cohabit than women without children. If they do marry, their husbands are more likely to have poor job prospects. <laughs> We find that women who bear children outside of marriage are at a considerable disadvantage in the marriage market, said Professor Daniel Lichter from Cornell University. Both the likelihood of marriage and the quality of marital partners are adversely affected by out-of-wedlock childbearing. And whose fault is that? Here's a boots-on-the-ground example of how difficult it can be. In the span of 24 hours, I had one man tell me that nobody will date a girl with a kid. And then I vented to another guy about the person who said that. And then he told me, no, that's not true. But a man doesn't want to date a girl who has slept with a lot of guys. Two for two. <laughs> Nevertheless, I agree with the original comment about some things being a man's job, such as being a father. Finally, someone who gets it. Likewise, there's some things that are quote unquote a woman's job, such as being a mother. This might sound obvious, but others would disagree. I think that we'll all agree that motherhood starts way beyond the biological event. And anyone, including men, can mother no. and play no. the role of a men, mother. Father. Mommy. <laughs> With respect, would you look into the face of a man that has just lost his wife and is really struggling to play the role of the mother and the father and mm. say that to him? Yeah. So you're not a mother. He's the father. That child, well, you might be more sensitive in those circumstances. You still call him He's a father. He's playing the role of the mother because... If that was me, I'd be a father. I wouldn't suddenly morph into a mother. Suggesting that mothers and fathers are interchangeable is another effinist falsehood. The different ways that men and women parent proves this. Yes. Once a baby arrives, a woman's maternal instinct almost always kicks in. Mama! Providing for her child emotionally is her first impulse, which is why going back to work too soon is agonizing for most mothers. A father's reaction is very different. His first instinct is to support the family financially. It's not his sole contribution, but it's first on his list. Hell yeah! Just because men and women may both be capable of performing identical tasks, it doesn't mean they want to do them with equal enthusiasm. To mother and to father are not gender specific. They're, they are they're, gender specific. No, they're not. Why are we pretending the otherwise? skills of course to they're mother and to father can be acquired. Are you, are you a woman? Well, yes, I am a woman. So, are you a man? So can okay. I suddenly say, you can I just literally say I'm a, I'm a woman? I am a, I am a woman, but I'm also capable of the skills it takes to father a child. Mm. Similarly, you are a man and you are capable of the skills to mother a child. I would mm. hope. I'm not sure, though, because nurturing, caring, is that in your capabilities? I brought up four kids I very well, so. but they've always known who their dad is and who their mum is. What's wrong with that? Yes, exactly, exactly. It's interesting that she uses traditional feminine qualities like caring and nurturing to suggest that he might be incapable of mothering. It's almost like she's aware that men and women excel in different areas of child rearing, in spite of her claiming that parenting is not gender specific. Disrespectful. And if you think it sounds like she might be trying to justify her life choice of being a single mother, you'd be correct. When I'm out with my son, because I'm a single parent, it's just me and him. Mm. And of course, parenting is gender specific because children see their mother and father differently. Children respect their mothers because she's the nurturer and caretaker who interacts the most with them. That's amazing but they typically see the father as the ultimate authority figure. He's the disciplinarian and decision maker whose word goes unquestioned. Many young children see their mother as a permanent fixture in their lives. They believe that their mothers have to love them and stay with them. But many children don't feel that way about their father. That's right. They feel they have to earn their father's love, so they try harder to behave around him. 
They don't want to get on his bad side and risk losing him. Helpless. A father might be totally committed and have a welcoming personality, but his children will still think they need to earn his respect and love. And that's a good thing, because when children respect their fathers, it makes for healthier home life. So at what point does everybody have a view on motherhood right. apart from mothers? Exactly. They're not gendered. A it's... man can play the role of a mother and have the skills Amy, required to be a mother. did you just actually say that? Damn! This is also infecting the British Medical Association. Yeah. They had an internal memo where they wanted to rename expectant mothers as pregnant people. Yeah. That's the world we're living in. We need to remember that babies come from women and fathers can be every bit as nurturing, but in a different way. Mothers and fathers have different skill sets. <laughs> I'm not even going to comment on the potential trans arguments here, which touch on pregnant people. I am very, very sneaky, sir. I need to be careful with the content, because two of my recent videos, one about passport bros, and the other about a supermodel hitting the wall, received the suppression treatment. Shocked. We are all shocked. Nevertheless, this lady is treading on very dangerous ground, because using logic and being openly honest about how men and women have different skill sets is likely to see her canceled. That doesn't make sense. While all mothers and fathers are different, there's plenty of evidence to show that mothers tend to bring more sensitivity and emotion to parenting than fathers. Wow. Fathers tend to encourage more problem-solving and risk-taking than mothers. It should be recognized that both are essential to the healthy growth and development of children. Inconceivable! Look at this next clip. Can you see anyone but a man participating in this type of character development of their son? The shit's chess, it ain't checkers. Frederick Douglass once noted, it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. True. The statement is as true as truth can be. And yet we as a society and as individual families neglect the building, facilitate the breaking, and shy away from the cost and commitment of the repair. Pathetic. Nothing keeps a young man out of trouble like a father who takes an active role in his son's life. They say that if a boy is lucky, his first hero is his father. Having a strong, positive, masculine role model for a dad will help guide him in the ways of being a man. I admire your honesty. Stephen Kendrick outlines seven roles that a father plays in the life of his family. These are provider, protector, leader, teacher, helper, encourager, and friend. What might seem like a simple ice bath challenge covers many of these, but the father is also teaching his son how to be competitive, daring, adventurous, dominant, assertive, and courageous. It's crucial that boys develop the ability to stand up to pressure because the life of a man is hard. Adversity builds character. What do you say we cut the chit chat a hole? It's also great to see men helping other men because ideally an entire village will raise a child. There's some that can, there's some that can't. The ones that can't is so damn mad. But shout out to the ones that can and understand that no matter how many kids a woman got, if she got kids or not, baby, a good woman is a good woman. Are you serious? Just because she's a good woman, it doesn't mean she's a good option for a man to date. <laughs> the default advice in the manosphere is that you should not date single mothers. Dating as a single mom in your 30s <laughs> that is trying to heal trash. However, before dealing with the reasons why dating a single mother is generally not recommended, I'll outline the reasons why some men might still want to do so. No! First, she's already proven her fertility. Second, she's not against having children. Not wanting to have children is a deal breaker for most men. It's a juice we have to squeeze. Third, her wild party days are likely over. 
Fourth, you can easily assess whether or not she's a good mother since she's already doing the job. Nice try. Finally, she's more likely to know her true sexual market value, so might be less judgmental, deluded, and picky. You're such a donor. With that being said, let's look at the reasons why in general, dating single mothers is not advised. You're saying that you wouldn't be with a single mother that's a millionaire? It wouldn't be my first option, no. No, you said a millionaire wouldn't want to be with a single mother that's a millionaire. If he can go ahead and get a girl that doesn't have a child, he'll prefer that. He'll men prefer are very that? different. Men are very different than women because when a guy comes into Perfect. a relationship with a woman and she has a child, he's going to be expected to take care of that child to a degree. And here's the other thing you got to remember. If we break up, right, and I build a bond with that child, I now lose you and the child. And I can't have any type of parental rights to that child because it's your biological child, not mine. I'm a stepfather, so I have no rights to that child. So I lose you, the child, alimony, house, 50%. So it's an L for me. It's not worth the risk. You're goddamn right. If we look at this from a utility standpoint, the negatives outweigh the positives by a great distance. You're not just dating her. You're also dating her children and the baby father. And at times, the baby father's family. Not a great plan. If you're looking for spontaneity, dating a single mother is a poor choice. You'll never come first in the relationship. And if she has more than one child, you won't even come second. And how will this work if her children aren't well behaved and you don't get on with each other? I have no idea. Even under the best circumstances, stepfathers have limited authority over a stepchild and are never allowed to be more than advisors. And when you have badly behaved stepchildren who don't like you, it complicates romance. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Most single mothers are also struggling to make ends meet, so how do you know that you represent anything more than a pet wallet? Wow. Having her move in with you so that she can save money represents serious risk. We've been dating for a year. Why don't you come and live with me and my kids? Well, I'm not sure if I'm ready for marriage, but this will be a good test. Let's move in together. Later. I'm sorry, I'm still not ready for marriage. You and the kids are great, but I'm just not ready. We should start seeing other people. Fine, but you owe me child support. What? That's crazy. They're not even my kids. Actually, she's right. You are in loco parentis, meaning you're seen as a parent in the eyes of the court. So you are responsible for child support. That's stupid, man. Don't do that, man. Come on. As far as dating's concerned, single mothers are a liability, not an asset. Her children that she had with other men are a liability, not an asset. Boy, this party really died. Compared to childless ladies, they bring more risks, fewer rewards, and more drama to your life. If you can't find a good companion to walk with, walk alone. It's better to be on your own than to be with those who will hinder your progress. I've now got to a stage where I depend on no one. I look after me, I look after my son, and I do a good job of it. Nonsense. Therefore, I don't need somebody to come into my life and support me financially. I don't need it. I can do it myself. So if you're going to be coming into my life, you need to be coming in with a good f***ing standing. And when I say that, what I mean is, you need to bring morals, respect, f***ing intellect. You need to make me laugh. I'm not bothered about the materialistic, basic ass shit about stunning good looks and f***ing bringing money. I could not give a f***, all right? What I need is a lot more than that. I need support mentally. I need something that's going to make me feel like a f princess. And I don't see why I should settle for less. Unfortunately, you're not very bright. Someone needs to inform her that profanity is the linguistic crutch of an inarticulate quit. All right, everybody, you know I kid. So I, quite frankly, that's why I'm single. Because as of yet, I've not found anybody that will put me as a priority, that will put me instead of themselves as number one. Whether that be because these people are children that I'm dating mentally, or whether it's just because they're narcissistic that's what I seem to have dated in the past. So I, that's why. Until I find somebody that completely benefits my life on a more substantial manner, I don't see why I should settle. And nobody else should f***ing settle either, man or woman. Settling is when your wants, needs, and desires in a relationship are being repeatedly unmet because your partner's incapable of meeting them. Pump and dump. Settling means there's a compatibility difference between you and your partner that's so significant that one of you is chronically sacrificing your needs in the relationship. In this regard, men settle almost all the time. <laughs> men are often with women who they don't truly want to be with, but are committed to from a sense of obligation, loyalty, or fear. She's my last chance at happiness, and that's more important than video games and masturbation, right? They might be unwilling to let go of a less-than-happy relationship, 
because it seems better than nothing. That's crossing the line. But I can't help but think that when modern women use the term don't want to settle, what they really mean is that they don't want to compromise or they don't want to be realistic. Yes! Because average women aren't interested in average men. And the main reason for this is because they have an unrealistic appraisal of their sexual market value. What are you, what are you, what are you talking about? What? You really only know what your sexual marketplace value when you get into a relationship. I knew somebody that I was very close to. She was an artist and she had never sold a painting before. And she started by offering her paintings for $100,000. <laughs> God bless her, you know, I love the, the courage with that, but it just wasn't really realistic that someone was gonna buy a piece of art for $100,000 from an unknown artist. It was only when she began to bring down that price that we got to see what that painting was actually worth. And that only occurred because somebody was willing to pay X amount for it. He ain't lying. Sexual market value, or SMV, is a calculation of your worth to a sexual partner. The higher your value, the more desirable you are. Oh man, she is so hot. Your SMV isn't determined merely by how physically attractive you are, although that is a component. It's a total sum of what you offer in a relationship. You're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur. Indeed, an individual's own SMV is the best predictor of the types of mates they'll pair up with, and that's especially true for long-term dating. Thus, the higher mate value an individual has, the more dating power they have. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. As previously outlined, a child generally makes a woman much less attractive. This is why a single mother charging $100,000 will lead to disappointment. Where did all the men go? Her price needs to be lower so that men determine her to be providing a more satisfactory value exchange. In other words, she might need to settle to avoid a life of being on her own. Until then, the actual price or the value of that painting was kind of like just pure potential. We only really realize worth in the moment of transaction, which can only occur between two individuals. Okay, so then let's say the girl gets into a relationship, then how do you determine her SMV from the guy's status? Yes. So I think that you can kind of, in this framework, determine a woman's sexual marketplace value by the normalized sexual marketplace value of the men who are willing to get into a relationship with her, and you can determine a man's male sexual marketplace value by the normalized sexual marketplace value of the women he is able to sleep with. That's right. This is why it's crucial that a woman who's looking to date seriously knows her market, knows her competition, and knows her SMV positioning. This way, she can make more informed choices when it comes to dating that'll lead to more realistic and favorable outcomes. Because in all likelihood, she doesn't want to end up like the lady in this next clip. It's important to have a man in your life. It's really important because of the simple fact that just seeing my son raised without a father, it's, it, it hurts. It really does. I'm happy for you because it's like, when you have that situation, you realize that it's like, this is my man, I'm gonna worship him, and this is the family I'm gonna create. When I'm a grandma and I have the whole entire room filled with my grandchildren, that is your real value. How do we stop this type of regret from happening in the first place? How do we state that fathers are needed without saying that single mothers are inadequate? You can't. According to Jordan Peterson, that's the killer right there, because one implies the other, or that's the theory because this is a shawl upon which our culture is wrecking itself. How do we reward behavior that's eminently pro-social in the broadest possible sense of the word without simultaneously punishing those who are excluded from that but struggling to do the best under the conditions that have presented themselves to them? That's impossible. My dad's never been there. My mom, she tried her best, but it's a lot of stuff about manhood that she can't teach me. So my question to you is, how do I learn how to be a man if I have no man influence in my life? See. The problem when a father walks out of these dudes' lives is there's a hole in his soul, the shape of his father. Here's the deal, single mothers. Every boy is going to emulate some man somewhere. He can be a good man or he could be a bad man. You got to hair up and get a good man in front of him. Shit, that's good advice. It's a sad condemnation of our times when children must seek advice from a chat show host instead of going to their parents. Disgusting! Nevertheless, Steve Harvey is correct about the importance of a single mother, placing a good man in front of her son for him to learn from, because a boy has to have at least one positive male role model in his life at some point in order to make it. He has to have a good man to mimic. However, if a young man is watching this 
and has never had a positive male role model in his life, what does he do? Good question. Here's what my uncle had to say. Here are what I regard as the five most important things to work on. First, focus on your anger. Anger is neither good nor bad. Anger is one of our basic emotions, alongside joy, sadness, disgust, surprise, and fear. Loud noises! So anger is not a problem, but the aggressive expression of anger is. Uncontrollable, destructive anger can wreak havoc on your life. Anger can also contribute to violent and risky behaviors, including substance and alcohol use. And on top of all that, anger can significantly damage relationships with family and friends. But how? As Marcus Aurelius noted, it isn't manly to be enraged. Rather, gentleness and civility are more human, and therefore manlier. A real man doesn't give way to anger and discontent, and such a person has strength, courage, and endurance, unlike the angry and complaining. The nearer a man comes to a calm mind, the closer he is to strength. No way! Second, focus on your health. Time and health are two precious assets that we don't recognize and appreciate until they've been depleted. Letting your health go is like overspending on a credit card. One day the bill's going to come. It might not be today, but the longer you leave it, the bigger the bill is going to be when it arrives. <laughs> Exercise is a basic ingredient that aids all other forms of self-improvement. Remember, health is wealth. Without it, you've got nothing. Nothing! Third, read a lot of books. Reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. You'll learn so much from books that you won't learn elsewhere, and most successful people will be avid readers. I find social media to be a soul-sucking void of meaningless affirmation. Fourth, choose your friends wisely. Be careful who you surround yourself with, for they can either lift you up or bring you down. Respect the game. There's a well-known saying, you're the average of the people you spend the most time around. Be mindful of red flags like negativity, drama, and most importantly, a lack of trustworthiness. Who is this guy? The company you keep is a reflection of your own character. The wrong friends can take you down a path you never wanted to go. And for a lot of young men, this often leads to prison, or worse. Finally, recognize the importance of perseverance. Fall seven times and stand up eight. Try again, fail again, fail better. After all, what do you call a doctor who graduated last in his class? A doctor. You still have to call him doctor. Excellent. The lesson here is in the importance of persevering in the face of frustration and doubt. Make sure to maintain a fighting spirit. You don't scare me! Work on it! Sir, yes, sir! As with all other forms of self-improvement, take it step by step and don't agonize over the slowness of your progress. Anything worth doing will take time. And the only guarantee for failure is to stop trying. Get busy living. You get busy dying. A lot of people got something to say about the fact that I got six kids with six different men. Raw dog and some randoms. So I'm just gonna tell y'all why it is better to do it this way. Daddy, Daddy issues, yeah, yeah! If I had six kids with all the same dude, I get 34% of his income, which is only six eighty a month. If I got six kids with six different dudes, I get 17% from each one of them, which is $340 a month from each one. $340 a month times six baby daddies is $2,040. Oh my God! So why don't you have six baby daddies? Uh, oh, come on! Albert Einstein said, two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. Humans are dumb. Before effinism came to dominate the mainstream narrative, having children out of marriage, was considered unacceptable and shameful. Now it's commonplace and financially incentivized. But there are some things that no amount of money can make up for. Randy Orton, oh my God, oh my God, Randy Orton, Randy Orton in the corner, Big Show's pro here, Big Show's pro, and Randy Orton, oh, off the distraction! Randy Orton, oh, okay. oh Big Show, and Big Show was staring at the authority! <laughs> Yeah, but can Randy Orton capitalize on it? Can he cover the Big Show? What an incredible turn of events here. Big Show and Randy Orton get the right before he <laughs> <laughs>